Hello everybody, happy Easter to you. Glad to see you today. I know most of the time I don't have a little stand in front of me like on usual days. I feel so professorial behind this. I may just break into a lecture right now. (laughs) I began uh, putting our talk together today after I read an article on a website from CNN. It was an opinion piece. Uh, sort of an editorial and written by a woman who lived in New York City and also spent some time in Africa, Nairobi. Okay, she was a reporter. She was talking about Easter and she was saying how she belongs to the fastest growing group of religious people in her age group. She's a millennial She belonged to the fastest growing religious group, which is the nuns. That's not an order. (laughs) That's not a religious order, N-U-N, that's N-O-N-E-S. I belong to nothing. I'm a nun. When they click off those boxes on surveys and they say, well, what are you? What's your religious background? Jewish, Hindu, Baptist, whatever, Episcopalian, Catholic. Then there's a box at the end that says, none, none of the above. I belong to nothing. She said, as someone who belongs to that group, she said, you know, us nuns, we still like celebrating Easter. And we like Christmas. Because there's lots of good reasons to like those holidays. For, For one thing, it's a holiday. Who doesn't like a holiday? So, the nuns, they appreciate a break in the middle of winter when Christmas comes and celebrate the turning of winter to spring and they like celebrating when springtime comes and flowers are coming out. It's a way to start over another year. Who doesn't like gathering together as family? Lots of family traditions uh, focus around these holidays. Christmas, Easter, maybe some other ones. Have some meal time. Spend time with friends, family. But when it comes to the spiritual part, the nuns say, no thank you. Don't believe. But I really like the holiday thing that you all do. For instance, lots of people are here today, probably, for some of those reasons. It's a family thing. Your mom asked you to go to church with you. I want to make mom happy. So you go to church with mom. The kids hang out in their nice new dresses. Do the Easter egg hunt. Everybody takes pictures. Put it in the family album. What is wrong with that? Nothing. It's fine. It's great. And there are lots of good reasons why the nuns don't come to church on the other days. Lots of very good reasons why they're not in a church on a Sunday besides Christmas Easter. For one thing, the church, in its background and history, certainly has been biased and bigoted and prejudiced against all different kinds of people. At a different time in church history, everybody knows church supported sometimes slavery or oppression of women or persecution of some other faith like the Jews. And the church hasn't always been really great with uh, science and the intellectual movements. Sometimes the church has been sort of anti-intellectual and a persecuted scientist. So there are lots of good reasons. If you belong to the nun cohort or you know somebody who does or you're here today, there's lots of good reasons to be here on this day and lots of good reasons not to be here on the other days. It is totally ironic, though, that those two days of the church year, if you're sort of a non-believer, it's so ironic to come on those two days of the year because those are like the most spiritual of days. (laughs) And Christmas time, we remember, we celebrate how this world of spirit, this unseen dimension, becomes incarnate in Jesus. Spirit becomes flesh. 
And then Easter time is like the reverse. The physical body dies and spirit returns to the Father. You get to see evidence that Jesus is alive. He takes on a new form. But essentially he's returning alive in a new form to the source, to his Father. <laughs> spirit becomes flesh. Flesh dies. Takes on a new form. Returns to heaven. There's nothing in there about social justice or love your neighbor or do nice things to people that a nun could really kind of get a hold of. Well, I'm not about religion, but I really kind of like the helping the neighbor part. Poor people, Christmas and Easter, your two worst days, you're just like a nightmare. <laughs> but here we are, Easter Day. And the story tells us that Jesus was killed. They come to look for him at the tomb, but he's not there. And messengers, angels say, look, he's not here because he's alive again. He's in a new form, but you'll recognize him. In fact, he'll come and show himself to you in Galilee, where he did most of his teaching. Tell my brothers they'll see me up in Galilee, my disciples. So, Jesus died, now alive again in a new way which they will recognize, but it's kind of hard. They have a little trouble recognizing him. And after so many days, in the way the church tells the story, there will be no more physical appearances. There will be a resurrection time, a time frame for 40, 50 days when he will show himself alive again. And then he will simply return to the Father. So he's alive, but in a different way. Now for the average person who is a non-believer, in other words, uh, doesn't have a religious faith, these stories, I'm telling you, just seem absolutely absurd. <laughs> They're just like, what are you talking about? But being polite, they would never tell me that to my faith. I'm the religious guy. But if they went to their friends and among their peers, they go, Gosh, that Easter thing. I like the Easter egg hunt. The spiritual stuff is just loony. Because there's nothing in Easter and resurrection that connects with this, a scientific world, a rational world. It speaks of things that are without form or formless. A higher order to which Jesus ascends. But, and here's the big but. No, I'm not talking about this big but. <laughs> I just want to say, but, suppose we were, as individuals, if you were to experience, so you would have the experience in your own being of knowing that a part of you is much more than a physical body, and a mental construct or personality. Suppose you could experience and know and touch in a way you would know for sure that you were more than a physical body and a personality. Something of you is of that spirit world or consciousness or energy. But there's something in you that is much more than body, much more than your mind and your personality. Once you touch that and you discover that that's actually the biggest part of you and this body thing, which is everyone's going to die sometime, the body thing and my personality, which changes from every day, what I believe, what I don't believe, that's just a tiny little surface level of who you are. If you knew experientially, you did an interior journey, said, who am I really? And my deepest level, my essence, my true self, you touch that part of you that is from God. Well then, then, when you hear a story about someone dying and their essence returning to the Father alive in a new form, you go, well, of course. What else could it be? <laughs> what else could it be? You're alive with God's life. It will never die. It will just change form. And you don't need to believe the Bible story because it's written in the Bible. You don't need to believe it because somebody with authority tells it to you. You can believe it because you know it and you experience your own connection to God that is from that realm of spirit. 
You believe it because you know it. And then when you know it in yourself, and you hear the Easter story, they go, well, of course. <laughs> Happy Easter. What else could it be? Jesus alive in a new form. Body died. Resurrected into a new form. I get that. So, I wanted to share with you a bit of an analogy that goes along with that. Do you remember growing up, uh, where are the Pagonises? When they teach science in school, for a long time they taught that the universe was a particular size and they pointed telescopes and different instruments to the sky and they could see the known universe. And then every couple years they make the instruments better and have new techniques and at first what they thought was the end of the universe turned out to be just a tiny little speck and that speck what they thought was a star was really like a galaxy it's like oh my god who knew it was so big it, the universe has gotten bigger and bigger as people have been able to see farther and farther and then they said well we used to think that earth was pretty rare that the chances of there being living a planet like this one I don't know people I don't know maybe but then once they saw how big the place was they said well of course <laughs> I, it's gonna happen if the universe is that big there are gonna be some other earths out there we may be rare but we're not like unbelievable the same thing is true suppose when you first hear well maybe there's life after death maybe if all you know of yourself is your physical body and your personality and somebody says well maybe maybe you continue on after this I say well maybe I'm not sure but once you take a bit of an interior journey you see your deepest parts of your own being as connected to God as being essentially part of God that spirit that is your true self you get beyond just the body, you get beyond just our opinions and our personalities and you say now I see who I really am and I'm enormous now you start thinking you know life after death it's probably not just possible it's darn right probable <laughs> because now you see who you really are life after death almost for sure because the part of you that is from God that is who you really are that's just going to change form it's taking one form with you right now but it'll just change over you'll enter a new phase of your journey because you know now spirit the part of you that touches God that's from forever and when you hear those Easter stories now you can say oh yeah of course of course so even people of no faith or little faith you used to call them agnostics or atheists but that's kind of technical now we just call them the nuns and they're happy to own the title the woman who wrote the article she was quite happy being a nun there was no shame or fear about that she just this is what it is I don't believe in God but she said I do like going to church or communities on holidays something good for the kids to do continue my family traditions have a nice meal connect with other people there's good reasons for nuns to be in church on Christmas and Easter and of course there are powerful reasons why a nun would never show up in a church on the other Sundays of the year because of all the bad things the church has done and because the stories feel unbelievable on the surface but if the nun takes a bit of a, a journey to find out who they really are not just live on the surface about I believe this I don't believe that not just oh here I am at age 20 30 40 50 and this is my body if you go deeper than all that and the nun touches the essence of who they are their spirit that is from eternity the, the part of them that is unchangeable their biggest foundation on which they rest 
Well, then Easter would be like, yippee yahoo, let's say hallelujah. Jesus has risen from the dead. And death isn't what it looks like. Death is just a transition. So, I know most of you guys today are probably not nuns. But, some of you might be. I kind of like the nuns. Because they don't just live on the storyline of their faith, which they learned when they were six. And they say, well, just believe the stories that you learned when you were six years old. Just believe it. Because if they're really going to be in church on a Sunday, they've gone deeper. They know who they are deep down. And now the stories ring and echo with the truth that it never did when they were six or seven. I love the nuns. Not the person. You know what I meant. So happy Easter to you all. Death is not what it seems. Jesus is risen from the dead. And happy Easter to you all. Amen.